You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 29th show. I provide you news on everything money, fresh information, and market trends in our local economy. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast to talk with the guests I have in studio or chat with uh, your host. Call 1-855-411-50. Again, you can call the show at 1-855-411-50 or online at the Money Hour. Com. Right now in studio, I'm going to have a conversation with John Viacava with Real Living Northwest Realtors, uh, talking about reinvesting in commercial property. John, first time in studio. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And uh, John, again, is with Real Living Northwest Realtors, eight years experience managing 45,000 square foot commercial property, bachelor's in communication from Seattle University. And uh, John, just to start out uh, today, a brief history on your commercial real estate experience. So for the last eight years, as you said, I've managed our, our family's property in Shoreline and um, we're anchored by QFC in Swedish. It's a neighborhood retail center. And uh, in 2012, we made the decision to reinvest and, and remodel the property, uh, complete overhaul, new sidewalks, landscaping, fascia, uh, retenanting, you know, attracting new tenants and a, a renewed sense of energy. So uh, probably probably more than I can talk about in an entire show, but uh-huh. uh, I'll do my best to keep it short. So, so John, what was the, uh, why did you choose to reinvest, remodel uh, in your, with your family's property? Really the most pressing reason is we had a number of vacancies and mm-hmm. uh, uh, coupled with that, we, we started to look dated and it had been about 22 years since the property had last been remodeled. So we knew we wouldn't be able to attract the tenants we wanted um, the way we were looking. So uh-huh. we decided it was time and, and there were some issues with the property. Our parking lot layout was less than ideal and uh, parking lot lighting wasn't the greatest for customer safety and, mm-hmm. and really just wanting to modernize and um, remain competitive with, uh, with with the market. So Got it. Yeah. So, John, what are some things uh, that people should consider when deciding whether to remodel and reinvest in property? I, I think the most important thing in the first step is really to, to figure out what your vision is and what your ultimate goal is. And, uh, you know, you, you need to um, really figure out what you want to get out of this. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it was to create a, a unique high-end neighborhood shopping experience and that kind of a, of a feel. And uh, like I said, to attract new tenants. You know, for most, it's probably to attract new tenants. That's usually as a landlord when you have a vacancy, uh, that, that's when things start to become a problem. And so for some, it may be to just get their rent roll back up to, you know, top performance and, mm-hmm. and sell it and move on. But uh like I said, most folks want want to, you know, fill their vacancies and, and fill them with good long term tenants who who add value. And so, um, you know, the the biggest thing to consider is your vision and and also the longevity of how long you want to keep the property. If it's mm-hmm. something you don't see yourself doing in five years, that will probably dictate how you how you reinvest and you know how you look at your your rate of return. Uh, for us, we know that this is something we want to keep for a very long time. Our, uh-huh. My great grandfather uh, purchased it in 1937, and wow. we, we intend to keep it for another 80 yeah, years. It's been uh, in the family that long. It's, yes. it's one of those things, mm-hmm. and so uh, it's it's something you've got to look at how long you want to do this, and and realistically, where you see yourself with this property in the next five, ten, or twenty years. So So. nothing different than in residential real estate or anything else that we're investing in, really just having a a plan to know exactly when we plan on making a change with that investment, and that's going to change the strategy that we have on that particular investment. So uh, it's not uncommon for commercial property to be passed down uh, through family by inherited, not me. It would have been nice. But um, if you're a a non-real estate professional and inherit, let's say, a shopping center, is this even an option? You know, it is. It, it really is. It's something where there is a steep learning curve. Uh-huh. There's, I remember starting out and the variety of that things I learned <laughs> from different concrete mixes and landscaping to lease strategies and, and tenanting uh, strategies. But it's something that if you stick with it, the, the long term uh, income potential is, mm-hmm. is huge. And it's something that... Uh, you can pass down to your to your family, and I think that's really neat. And and for for me and for my my mom and grandparents, uh, there's a lot of pride 
And, yes. and so for us, it's not just a job. It's not just uh, something we do. It's something we really feel a part of. And so uh, I think you absolutely can do it. Um, if you decide to go, go forward and, and to manage it, the biggest piece of advice I could give is to utilize your resources. Yeah. Uh, you do not need to go into it alone. I know when I started, my, my mom is my, my boss and still uh-huh. is. And it uh-huh. was really nice to have that uh, support. And uh, we also you know, utilized brokers and uh, they really know the market. And, and now as a broker myself, a lot of that experience really helps kind of guide you. It, uh, you, you become much more effective in your decision making because you know what tenants are looking for, what people want, what the market's doing, and uh, it'll really help position you, uh, you know, the, as best you can. Uh, in addition to that, and I, this probably speaks more to the long term management of a property, but is uh, utilizing a, an attorney. Know your mm-hmm. leases and and know the ins and outs of it. You live and die by your lease, and so. Part of reinvesting and remodeling is making sure you can maintain that. And, sure. and that's where I think that really uh, comes in handy. And uh, finally, you know, it's really important to engage your community. Uh, I think a lot of landlords are hesitant to do that. They're afraid they will face criticism. And, and it's not uncommon. You yeah. do. I mean, huh. when we were doing our project, there were some who didn't exactly like what was going on. I think a lot of people are, are hesitant to change, but I sure. I think, you know, it's the only thing you can count on in life. Yep. And uh, and a lot of those people in your community want to know what you're doing. They care. They're the ones who help keep your tenants in business. So yeah. to, to discount their opinion, I, I think would uh, would not be a good idea. It's it's going to leave you, you know, with, with less information than, than you can have. So... So think, bring that community get community together, communicate what your plans are, um, at, have it, it uh, planned out and exactly what's happening so you can find out whether where their needs are, where their concerns are, so you can address those and ultimately bring everybody in um, together on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think sometimes what, what we as landlords think is, is best might not always uh, reflect what the community wants. And it's of very course. important. And at the end of the day, you won't make everyone happy. Sure. But it's important to at least have that kind of back and forth uh, dialogue with them. So you'd mentioned you just said you got your worker's license. So uh, what was the reason behind that and inspired by what you're doing now? Yeah, it was really something that after this process, I realized I I had a real passion for it. Mm -hmm. And part of that was really working with local business people and finding out what makes their business different and and how to best serve that as a landlord and and, uh, realized I wanted to go out and and continue to do that and and to help uh, help people in the local business communities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, find new spaces or as a landlord, help them fill their spaces with, with good tenants. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm always interested in what people are doing. Just today, I was meeting with a, a lady whose business imports fair trade and ethically produced products from India. And she said, one of the biggest things for us is visibility, but we really can't have storefront windows because it degrades our, our product, our fabric. It's all hand dyed. And, okay, wow. and I thought that was Makes so interesting. Sense, yeah. You would never think, well, no. so there's so many different things. And that's what I really like about, about what I do. And especially with retail, there's so many moving parts that uh, it, it always keeps me engaged. I'm always learning something, something new and, yeah. and different. And I really, I really like that aspect of it. So. So just like, in, again, on the residential real estate and anything else that we're doing, having an expert that really understands what you're trying to accomplish is really important. So for uh, people that are considering getting into um, uh, commercial uh, properties and finding a commercial broker, really what should they be looking for to know that they're working with somebody that really knows what they're doing and is an expert in that arena? Well, I think uh, obviously with any profession you work with someone, you want someone who's driven and, and motivated. And, mm-hmm. and I think uh, sometimes commercial brokers get a bad rap for just putting a sign up on a property and sort of walking away. And I think you need to find someone who who lives in your community, who who really takes pride. I think they're going to be the one who best delivers the right tenant and the right solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, knowing the community on a deeper level. For us, we were pretty close to Aurora, which is a huge, huge road. I mean, about 50,000 cars per day. But uh, we know that a lot of people don't want to cross Aurora at 530 at night. And that's where our shopping center as a neighborhood center really comes into play because we we serve that need. And so Mm -hmm. you need to find someone who who is aware of that and who can help guide you in the right direction and and help you realize and show you things about your property you you may not have known. And uh, just someone who who really is ingrained within the community. They're going to be the one who has the best connections and and who knows – Who's looking for what and what Got local it. business person is, is le- their lease is up in six months and, and they can kind of connect you and 
that's really what so makes... So somebody, that, a commercial broker that is connected, invested in the community. Correct. Yeah, yeah makes, on a makes total level. sense. Yeah. So what is one of the most common pitfalls of a landlord when redeveloping their property? Well, I think really there's two, and, and sort of, a, as I had said earlier, utilizing your resources. Yes. I think a lot of people feel that they they either don't know how to look for the help or they, they don't know the questions to ask. and. What I would say there is, is, you know, obviously find a good broker, engage within your community groups. Chances are they probably know somebody who's in commercial and, and who can help uh, guide you in, in that, uh, you know, in that industry. Uh, and then uh, this may sound obvious, but staying organized. It's something mm-hmm. that it's very doable, but you've got to be very regimented. And if all of a sudden life gets in the way and things pop up, uh, things can get derailed. And that's yeah. when you really come with issues, and especially in a construction project like a remodel. Mm-hmm. If if you miss certain deadlines, all of a sudden you're months over your project, and, and that's, that's a lot disaster. of money out of your pocket. Yeah. And, I mean, each day you're on the job, it costs. And so you've you've got to stay organized, and you've got to make sure you've got good experts behind you to yes. help, help you go go through that. So, John, why should you invest in a property rather than just let it sit and try to maximize your profit profits? Well, plain and simple, really, eventually they'll run out. Um, what will happen is you will look dated, your property, mm-hmm. sort of as ours did. You, you begin to look dated, and, and it's very hard to attract new tenants, and, and it's hard to keep the ones you have. And yeah. then all of a sudden, your cash flow is at a point where it's not very viable to, to reinvest in it. So the key is to reinvest before you get to that point. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not going to end well if, if you let it sit too long. And ultimately, a, a remodeled property is almost always going to command higher rents and attract better tenants and, uh, you know, than those who are dated. It, it's just, it's the way to go if you want to continue this asset and continue to, uh, you know, manage. You got to really make sure that you're taking care of the asset. Um, Absolutely. To, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's really important to do, do some kind of investment, even if you can't do a, a massive overhaul. Every uh-huh. three to five years, have a project, whether it's new landscaping or sidewalks or updating your parking lot or signage. And that makes sense. I mean, I always talk about doing, you know, making small changes because nothing different here. It can see overwhelming if you look at the big project or the big picture. But if you're just making small changes, like you said, then you're maintaining and keeping it at that up-to-date level. Correct. It's sort of a preventative maintenance yes. in, in a sense. Yeah. So. John, thank you so much for coming in and joining me in studio. I'm excited to uh, have you come back again in the near future. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Coming up next in the Money Hour, how much Social Security should matter to the youth? Andy Lan is one of nation's foremost authorities on Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Right here on 1150 AM, KKNW, after this short break.